the seven cream jugs by saki this is recorded to celebrate the seventh anniversary of librivox all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit LibriVox.org. I suppose we shall never see Wilfred Pigeoncote here now that he has become heir to the baronetcy and to a lot of money, observed Mrs. Peter Pigeoncote regretfully to her husband. Well, we can hardly expect to, he replied, seeing that we always choked him off from coming to see us when he was a prospective nobody. I don't think I've set eyes on him since he was a boy of twelve. There was a reason for not wanting to encourage his acquaintanceship, said Mrs. Peter. With that notorious failing of his, he was not the sort of person one wanted in one's house. Well, the failing still exists, doesn't it? said her husband. Or do you suppose a reform of character is entailed along with the estate? Oh, of course, there is still that drawback, admitted the wife but one would like to make the acquaintance of the future head of the family, if only out of mere curiosity. Besides, cynicism apart, his being rich will make a difference in the way people will look at his failing. When a man is absolutely wealthy, not merely well-to-do, all suspicion of sordid motive naturally disappears. The thing becomes merely a tiresome malady. Wilfred Pigeoncote had suddenly become heir to his uncle, Sir Wilfred Pigeoncote, on the death of his cousin, Major Wilfred Pigeoncote, who had succumbed to the after-effects of a polo accident. A Wilfred Pigeoncote had covered himself with honours in the course of Marlborough's campaigns, and the name Wilfred had been a baptismal weakness in the family ever since. The new heir to the family dignity and estates was a young man of about five and twenty, who was known more by reputation than by person to a wide circle of cousins and kinfolk. And the reputation was an unpleasant one. The numerous other Wilfreds in the family were distinguished one from the other chiefly by the names of their residences or professions, as Wilfred of Hubbledown and young wilfred the gunner but this particular scion was known by the ignominious and expressive label of wilfred the snatcher from his late school days onward he had been possessed by an acute and obstinate form of kleptomania he had the acquisitive instinct of the collector without any of the collector's discrimination anything that was smaller and more portable than a sideboard and above the value of ninepence had an irresistible attraction for him provided that it fulfilled the necessary condition of belonging to someone else on the rare occasions when he was included in a country house party it was usual and almost necessary for his host or some member of the family to make a friendly inquisition through his baggage on the eve of his departure to see if he had packed up by mistake any one else's property the search usually produced a large and varied yield this is funny said peter pigeoncote to his wife some half hour after their conversation here's a telegram from wilfred saying he's passing through here in his motor and would like to stop and pay us his respects can stay for the night if it doesn't inconvenience us signed wilfred pigeoncote must be the snatcher none of the others have a motor i suppose he's bringing us a present for the silver wedding good gracious said mrs peter as a thought struck her this is rather an awkward time to have a person with his failing in the house all those silver presents set out in the drawing-room and others coming by every post i hardly know what we've got and what are still to come we can't lock them all up he's sure to want to see them we must keep a sharp look-out that's all said peter reassuringly 
but these practised kleptomaniacs are so clever said his wife apprehensively and it will be so awkward if he suspects that we are watching him awkwardness was indeed the prevailing note that evening when the passing traveller was being entertained the talk flitted nervously and hurriedly from one impersonal topic to another the guest had none of the furtive half apologetic air that his cousins had rather expected to find he was polite well assured and perhaps just a little inclined to put on side his hosts on the other hand wore an uneasy manner that might have been the hallmarks of conscious depravity in the drawing-room after dinner their nervousness and awkwardness increased oh we haven't shown you the silver wedding presents said mrs peter suddenly as though struck by a brilliant idea for entertaining the guest here they all are such nice useful gifts a few duplicates of course seven cream jugs put in peter yes isn't it annoying went on mrs peter seven of them we feel that we must live on cream for the rest of our lives of course some of them can be changed wilfred occupied himself chiefly with such of the gifts as were of antique interest carrying one or two of them over to the lamp to examine their marks the anxiety of his hosts at these moments resembled the solicitude of a cat whose newly born kittens are being handed round for inspection let me see did you give me back the mustard pot this is its place here piped mrs peter sorry i put it down by the claret jug said wilfred busy with another object oh just let me have the sugar sifter again asked mrs peter dogged determination showing through her nervousness i must label it who it comes from before i forget vigilance was not completely crowned with a sense of victory after they had said good night to their visitor mrs peter expressed her conviction that he had taken something i fancy by his manner that there was something up corroborated her husband do you miss anything mrs peter hastily counted the array of gifts i can only make it thirty-four and i think it should be thirty-five she announced i can't remember if thirty-five includes the archdeacon's cruet stand that hasn't arrived yet how on earth are we to know said peter the mean pig hasn't brought us a present and i'm hanged if he shall carry one off tomorrow when he's having his bath said mrs peter excitedly he's sure to leave his keys somewhere and we can go through his portmanteau it's the only thing to do on the morrow an alert watch was kept by the conspirators behind half-closed doors and when wilfred clad in a gorgeous bathrobe had made his way to the bathroom there was a swift and furtive rush by two excited individuals towards the principal guest chamber mrs peter kept guard outside while her husband first made a hurried and successful search for the keys and then plunged at the portmanteau with the air of a disagreeably conscientious customs official the quest was a brief one a silver cream jug lay embedded in the folds of some zephyr shirts the cunning brute said mrs peter he took a cream jug because there were so many he thought one wouldn't be missed quick fly down with it and put it back among the others wilfred was late in coming down to breakfast and his manner showed plainly that something was amiss it is an unpleasant thing to have to say he blurted out presently but i'm afraid you must have a thief among your servants something's been taken out of my portmanteau it was a little present from my mother and myself for your silver wedding i should have given it to you last night after dinner only it happened to be a cream jug and you seemed annoyed at having so many duplicates so i felt rather awkward about giving you another i thought i'd get it changed for something else and now it's gone did you say it was from your mother and yourself 
asked mr and mrs peter almost in unison the snatcher had been an orphan these many years yes my mother's at cairo just now and she wrote to me at dresden to try and get you something quaint and pretty in the old silver line and i pitched on this cream jug both the pigeon coats had turned deadly pale the mention of dresden had thrown a sudden light on the situation it was wilfred the attache a very superior young man who rarely came within their social horizon whom they had been entertaining unawares in the supposed character of wilfred the snatcher lady ernestine pigeoncote his mother moved in circles which were entirely beyond their compass or ambitions and the son would probably one day be an ambassador and they had rifled and despoiled his portmanteau husband and wife looked blankly and desperately at one another it was mrs peter who arrived first at an inspiration how dreadful to think there are thieves in the house we keep the drawing-room locked up at night of course but anything might be carried off while we are at breakfast she rose and went out hurriedly as though to assure herself that the drawing-room was not being stripped of its silverware and returned a moment later bearing a cream jug in her hands there are eight cream jugs now instead of seven she cried this one wasn't there before what a curious trick of memory mr wilfred you must have slipped downstairs with it last night and put it there before we locked up and forgotten all about having done it in the morning one's mind often plays one little tricks like that said mr peter with desperate heartiness only the other day i went into town to pay a bill and went in again next day having clean forgotten that i'd it is certainly the jug i bought for you said wilfred looking closely at it it was in my portmanteau when i got my bathrobe out this morning before going to my bath and it was not there when i unlocked the portmanteau on my return some one had taken it while i was away from my room the pigeon coats had turned paler than ever mrs peter had a final inspiration get me my smelling salts dear she said to her husband i think they're in the dressing-room peter dashed out of the room with glad relief he had lived so long during the last few minutes that a golden wedding seemed within measurable distance mrs peter turned to her guest with confidential coyness a diplomat like you will know how to treat this as if it hadn't happened peter's little weakness it runs in the family good lord do you mean to say he's a kleptomaniac like cousin snatcher oh not exactly said mrs peter anxious to whitewash her husband a little greyer than she was painting him he would never touch anything he found lying about but he can't resist making a raid on things that are locked up the doctors have a special name for it he must have pounced on your portmanteau the moment you went to your bath and taken the first thing he came across of course he had no motive for taking a cream jug we've already got seven as you know not of course that we don't value the kind gift you and your mother hush here's peter coming mrs peter broke off in some confusion and tripped out to meet her husband in the hall it's all right she whispered to him i've explained everything don't say anything more about it brave little woman said peter with a gasp of relief i could never have done it diplomatic reticence does not necessarily extend to family affairs peter pigeoncote was never able to understand why mrs consuelo van bullion who stayed with them in the spring always carried two very obvious jewel cases with her to the bathroom explaining them to anyone she chanced to meet in the corridor as her manicure and face massage set end of the seven cream jugs by saki read 
by noel bedrian